So one of my latest uh, vintage collecting projects is the 1963 Fleer set. Now this is uh, not a very well known set and a lot of that is because it was a very small set and really wasn't supposed to happen. Um, during uh, Fleer had been making uh, sets mostly from um, former former players also they did a Ted Williams set um, but they decided to try to compete directly with Tops by issuing cards of current players and the uh, problem with that is that Tops had a basically uh, essentially a legal monopoly um, in uh, distributing uh, trading cards with uh, some sort of confection in them, uh, in that, that case gum. Uh, so what Fleer did is, well, they decided to go ahead and try it anyway, and they uh, issued a first series of these cards, 66 cards in the set. The uh, cards in green, uh, the players in green are the Hall of Fame players. Uh, and they did this, uh, and they put um, a, uh, a, they packed them with a little cookie, which had very little sugar. They were trying to do everything they could to uh, not run afoul of tops, but they ended up getting a cease and desist order, and that ended this set at one series. Now, it, um, uh, although it doesn't have, say, Mickey Mantle, uh, which is kind of one of the big ones from this era, um, you can see it has a decent selection of, a uh, pretty decent selection of Hall of Famers, actually, um, including, including uh, Koufax and Drysdale and Clemente. Um, so, um, and Willie Mays. Um, so this set is fairly easy to collect, even though it was kind of a bootleg set. Uh, there's enough of them out there, and I guess there's uh, the interest in them is low enough that it's not too hard to find to find these cards and to find them in decent condition. Um, this uh, this little spreadsheet I'm using, these columns here are recent average prices in the different PSA grades. So these are actual prices from um, uh, from auctions and PSA 9 down to PSA 6. And one thing you can see here is that even in PSA 8, the commons here are typically going for about $20. Now what I'm doing is I'm buying, uh, generally right now buying raw cards. Now I may get some of them graded uh, at some point, but I'm generally trying to get them in the equivalent of what would be maybe PSA 7, PSA 8 condition, near, uh, near mint or maybe near mint to mint. Okay, so actually, let's actually look at some cards. Um, so here's an example. Um, right now I only have basically pretty much commons. Um, Ray Herbert, um, this is, uh, you'll have to excuse this stuff on the back here, I'll show you the back on a different card. Uh, this is from, I bought these from uh, the batter's box uh, online and they have their stickers on them. But this is uh, what they look like. They have a color picture, um, name and, and uh, team, uh, position. They have a little diamond here with a little uh, drawing. Um, if the pitcher, if it's a pitcher, they have a drawing of them pitching. If it's a right-handed pitcher, they show them pitching right-handed. Left-handed pitcher, they show them left-handed. Uh, Al Jackson, for instance, of the Mets was a left-hander. Uh, and then for the um, for other positions, they either show them hitting or they might show them fielding. Um, that's just the way they, uh, and that was what they what they decided to do. Um, here's one that uh, doesn't have uh, stickers and stuff on the back, Norm Seaburn. Um, he was a pretty good player. Uh, and so on the back they have uh, you know the standard information here. Then they have uh, some text. The card number is here in the middle with uh, crossed bats. And then they have the stats here in kind of a different format than, than Tops would, would normally do. They have kind of a vertical format here for the previous year, 1962, and their lifetime totals. So these are some of the ones that I've that I've uh, that I've bought. Um, I recently picked up a lot of cards. Now a couple of these are like this one. I already have a better uh, Ray Herbert. The uh, this one's very off center, so I'm 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 going more for more for centering. I'd rather have a card with better centering and soft corners than sharp corners and off center. Um, but these are all pretty much all commons. Ralph Terry. Yeah, you know, maybe a minor could be maybe considered a minor star, not one of the big stars. Um, and we look through and, and uh, Roy Face, um, 
was fairly well known. Now, one thing I noticed, though, in looking at this lot, and this is kind of interesting, you can see here on the edge, and, and I, I'm tamping this down so that there is level on the bottom, and look at the top. It is definitely not level on the top. <laughs> and if, you, uh, if I do the same thing here left to right, uh, maybe not as dramatic, um, but there, th I think there are a couple of trimmed cards in here. Um, this one here, this uh, uh, Rod Canal in particular, let me, uh, let me find one of the taller ones, compare it to Jim Landis. Um, that's a lot off the top. Okay, that's level on the bottom and you can see there's a big difference on the top and level on the level on the side not so much on the side more on the top to bottom so um, it's it's been of course this was and and you know the back here being off center that could just be you know that that might be a, uh, I don't know whether that could be from cutting or not um, this happens with old cards and this is one of the things you have to be careful of especially with um, star players from older cards is that people will trim them and sometimes they'll try to get them graded like that now sometimes a place like PSA will catch that and it'll it'll show up as uh, the card will be show up as being too small and they won't grade it and, and encapsulate it um, and this can be actually this is actually a big problem with uh, and, and it becomes a problem with graded cards too because if someone trims it and it's still within the size size of requirements of a grading company, it'll still show up as a you know it can still get graded, and you can go online on some of the forums and, and find examples of that. Uh, but I suspect that that some of these cards probably probably would come back as being uh, being too small if I were to uh, grade them. Um, but I've got to look through this. I just got this lot, and I've got to kind of sort these out. I'm trying to again. I'm trying to find the you know get a good good specimen of each card. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with the star cards. Whether I'm going to try to buy raw cards or whether I'm going to um, just buy graded cards to hopefully have a little better chance that their <laughs> the cards aren't trimmed. Um, like I said, that can be a little bit of a little bit of a crapshoot. But you know this is a nice small set. That's one reason why I like it. Um, and even though it's a small set, it still has a good number of Hall of Famers, so it's not just uh, it's not just a bunch of random scrubs. Um, the uh, I kind of like the design. It's uh, it's fairly simple, but uh, the the pictures here they got kind of nice, you know, a lot mostly portrait style pictures, um, which are which actually but they're portrait style, you know, with with usually with an interesting background. Not always. Sometimes they're just. Uh, they're just, you know, <laughs> up against the dugout wall. Uh, but it's an interesting style. And this is one that I'll probably be working on. Uh, you know, this will one I gradually work on. Uh, again, I have to, I'm, I'm getting already a, a fairly high percentage of the, of the commons. Now i gotta start, so I got to start thinking about what I want to do with the, uh, uh, with the more expensive uh, star cards. Uh, but this is one that I'll, uh, that I'll be working on over the coming months. So that's it for this time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.